starting to hear a lot of rumors about a big buck in the public marsh near my home. And uh, it was too many rumors for it to be coincidence, but I hadn't laid eyes on it myself yet. So I kind of went on a mission, started glassing and shining around the area. I was hearing about the rumors. And then I got uh, eyes on this buck. And uh, it was a pretty good buck. So I actually shined it on private land, but it was across the street from the public. And uh, I assumed it was coming from the public to the private because there's better betting on the public. So the next day I went in and I, there's one bedding area that in that area that if there's something really big shows up, it always shows up there. So the next day I went in there hunting uh, with a friend of mine from the forum and uh, he went and hunted one area and, and I went in where I thought that buck might be. And as I'm accessing the bedding area, I have to go through this little area where occasionally does bed, but it's not really a good doe bedding area. And a doe jumps up and up stands this buck right in front of me. And I kind of split them. You know, one's the does over here and the bucks over here. And he's in range. So I started trying to get an arrow off my, my bow and, and get it knocked. And then he takes off. Well, I set up and uh, hoping he'd come back because I split the doe ran that way and the buck ran that way. They split. And uh, he did come back right at dark, um, but he circled way downwind to me, winded me, and took off, which is pretty common. They come back in, check the wind before they come back. So that was a cat and mouse game for the rest of the year, and I never did get a crack at that buck that year. But he was laying down a lot of sign and getting seen a lot. And a lot of guys were glassing him, shining him. There was uh, a line of cars shining him where I had seen him on a regular basis, especially the weekends. So um, the next year, I kept an eye on, out for that buck. Um, there was obviously historical sign where he was crossing the road, historical sign in the bedding areas that this was a routine of this buck's. But he kind of stayed living on the private side, and it seemed to me that he was coming to the public side during the rut. That particular primary buck bedding area that he was bedding at is adjacent to a doe bedding area. And historically, the biggest bucks in the area like to bed there in pre-rut and monitor the does. So I assume that would be my best crack is when he came back for those does because otherwise he's on the private where I can't hunt him. So uh, towards the end of October, I started monitoring the uh, rub lines coming in and out of that uh, bedding area from, from a distance. Now I'm monitoring him from you know, three, 400 yards away from his uh, bedding area. So I'm not really doing any damage. But I did notice that uh, the buck was still being seen quite a bit, and it was drawing a lot of attention. And there were a lot of people hunting the area because of that buck. Um, he walked up a logging road when he'd crossed the road, and he'd lay scrapes down. And there was guys hunting right next to the parking lot, right on the, the access trail <laughs> over scrapes, where every hunter going out there is walking under the guy looking at him. Well, uh, right towards the end of October, the rub lines opened up back there, and I was pretty sure he was back. So I went back there to hunt him, and, and you know, the rumors are picking up again. So you go to the gas station, guys are coming, oh, I've seen this giant buck over there, you should go over there, and blah, blah, blah. So I checked the rubs, they're open, I go in there. And uh, I decided I'm going to hunt that night. That was, uh, that was Halloween night. October 31st. 
So I go in there and I'm walking back and uh, as I'm getting closer to this bed area, it's an overlooked area that nobody ever really thinks is a buck bedding area. But it is, and it's a great one. But there's hardly any trees. It's really thick, nasty brush. It's a bowl um, of brush that goes into a little bit of timber. And you got to get right in there. Um, so I, I get back in there, and uh, first thing I run into is a guy stuffed into a, a little brushy pine tree. Like I said, very much for trees. He's got a decoy out. He's got uh, rattling antlers and all kinds of crap. You know, and uh, then I run into a guy hunting a rub line. You know, and and another guy doing this, another guy doing that. There were guys surrounding that area, but this buck was laying down a lot of sign, so it was getting these people excited. So looking at that, some of those guys I had to go past, they they looked a little <laughs> pissed at me for walking past them. But you got to do what you got to do. They ain't gonna kill that deer two or three hundred yards from its bedding area. That buck ain't gonna move that far in daylight, and I know it. And if I want to kill him, I got to get past those guys. <laughs> So I just made my way back there, got to my tree, and I had, I knew the bedding area well, and there's probably 20, 30 different beds in that bedding area, and they bed a little different on the different winds, and I had figured he'd be in this one particular bed, but it's all kind of low brushy, so I can kind of see in there when they stand up and move, but it is thick, you know, dogwood, red brush and stuff, and, um, about a half an hour before dark, right after sunset or at about sunset, I see that buck get up right out of the exact bed I'm expecting him. And that trail comes right to me. So he starts coming in, and uh, you kind of lose sight of him a little bit in the thick stuff, but you can see him, hear him coming, little tidbits. Uh, I didn't get no film. It's really hard, nasty stuff to see in. You got little tiny shot windows. Um... By the time that buck got from the bed to me, which was, uh, I was 75 yards from the bed. By the time he got to me, it was just about closing time. And uh, my shot hit a little high. I spined him. And uh, I've had a bad incident or two where you spine a deer and you think he's dead and you lower your bow and they jump up and run off and you never find them. So when that thing uh, hit the ground, I filled them full of arrows. <laughs> uh, that that hunt, I had uh, taken Dave Dockstader with me, and I put him in another area, like a back door kind of area, if it came out the backside. And uh, I come back out, and uh, I couldn't find him. It was funny. He uh, He wasn't at the meeting spot. So I went to the truck, and he wasn't at the truck. So I went back to the meeting spot, he wasn't there. So I went to his tree, he wasn't there, and I started to kind of, like, worry a little bit. I get back to the truck, and now it's like, a you know, an hour after closing, and finally found him. He had uh, gotten lost and wa wandered out uh, a mile up the road. Dude, spoon her down. What? Spoon her down, I got him. I, fucking... I, heard, I heard you shoot. I nailed him. I told you he's a good one. How big do you think that thing is, Dave? Oh, he ain't big. <laughs> Look at the size of the body in that thing. I think he's a little wider than you think he thought he was. Pull his head out of here so we can take a good look at him. <laughs> yeah, he's got to be. 
21 inside, maybe? Yeah, I just think he's a little bit whiter than he thought. Holy crap, Dave. <laughs> Look at the mass on that thing. Yeah.